Voice command in Skyrim is surprisingly awesome. Equip health potion. <laughs> Ally attack. Equip dual fire spell. Sword by value. Ally use. Equip light. Quick save. Unrelenting force. Hi, I'm Ram Nexus. I make videos looking at the technical aspects of my favorite games, and I spent the last two weeks playing Skyrim with voice commands. I have to say it's not a perfect system, but it does have some really useful features, including a few controls that are just not available on any other vanilla version of Skyrim. Solitude. White Run. Riften. I found using this voice command system a lot of fun, and I would actually say that my gameplay experience was improved most of the time. So I thought I'd show you its good points and where voice control just falls over. This is what happens. And in case you're interested in trying it for yourself, I'll show you what's needed to get voice control working and which commands I found the most useful. Even if you can't see yourself using voice commands, if you're a Skyrim fan, you'll find something of interest in this video. Sound good? Right, let's do this. What do we need to get this voice command feature to work in Skyrim? First off, you'll need one of these. Yes, this is my Xbox 360, and you'll recognize that thing on top. That's the Connect controller. Skyrim's voice command feature is only available for Skyrim on the Xbox 360, and it requires the Connect controller to enable voice recognition. Unfortunately, there is no other version of Skyrim that uses this voice command feature. I have seen a couple of older mods, but I confess I've not tried them. They only seem to provide partial voice control compared to this official system. So then, if you want to use the voice command feature, then you're limited to the 360 version of Skyrim, which is the original version. And unfortunately, Bethesda didn't carry over the voice command feature from the original to the special edition of the game, which means voice command is not a feature available on the Xbox One or later consoles. And I think this is a bit of a shame, actually, as you can play other Bethesda 360 games in enhanced mode on the newer Xbox consoles, including Oblivion and Fallout 3, but the 360 version of Skyrim was never made compatible with the Xbox One. As an aside, in case you're interested, I've made a videos looking at the graphics and performance of Oblivion and Bethesda's Fallout games on the newer Xbox consoles and how they've changed over the years. Xbox. Play Skyrim. It was quite refreshing playing this original vanilla version of Skyrim. My quest log is not bloated with Creation Club content or DLC quests. Well, there was no constant visits by the courier or attacks by the dragon cult. It was quite a nice change. I was able to find my old character from 10 years ago. So he's a level 44 orc who uses heavy armor, mace and a shield. And that was about it. Because we're using the Xbox 360 version of the game, gameplay footage is not that great. The game's native resolution is only 720p. So what I've done to make it look a bit better is I've attached my Marseille M Classic dongle to the 360 video out, which introduces anti-aliasing to the image and so smooths out all the jagged edges. And it does a pretty good job, I have to say. I'm also using my 4K Gamer Pro to upscale the image to 4K which should improve the quality of the final uh, gameplay footage once it gets to YouTube. Skyrim was released back in November 2011, and in December 2011, Bethesda ran a week-long internal Skyrim game jam. 
where staff were allowed to do whatever they wanted with the Skyrim game engine to see what they could come up with. And the next year, Bethesda released a three minute sizzle reel video showing off what ideas had come out of that game jam. And one of those ideas was voice control for Skyrim. Just on that Game Jam video, I recommend you might want to take a look at it. You'll recognize a bunch of ideas that were later patched into the game or included in DLC. But there's also some other ideas which were never officially released, though uh, no doubt some have been modded into the game. Just be warned though, this video has uh, super catchy background music, which is quite good, but God, I had it stuck in my head for about three bloody days afterwards. Um, so you've, you've been warned. Uh, Seriously, though, it's a really good video, and if you're interested in the history of Skyrim, it's one to watch. I'll leave a link. In 2012, Bethesda also released a trailer for the voice control system for Skyrim. Using your own voice to control shouts in the game was the main selling point in that Skyrim Connect trailer. But I'm here to tell you that that is one of the least useful features of this voice command system. Yes, you can say the dragon language name for a shout and voila, yes, there you go. You've got your shout. But I ask you this, how many of the dragon names for the 20 shouts available in the base game can you remember? What the trailer doesn't mention is that the default way of using your thum, your shout, is just to say the shout's name in English, like unrelenting force. Unrelenting force. The advantage of using the dragon name for your shout is that you can choose to use the shout at level one, two, or three. So if you just say fuss or fuss row, then you've used level one or two of unrelenting force. Whereas saying it in English always generates the most powerful version of the shout you have. Become ethereal. I'm king. One thing I noticed with the voice command system is that I tended to use shouts more often. And I also used a wider variety of shouts because there was no need to go into the menu and select which shout I wanted to use. So for example, I used disarm more. Disarm. I use slow time more often. Slow time. Which are both quite useful, but they're not ones I usually put into my favourites menu. Honestly, the main challenge I found was remembering the name of each shout, even the English names of the shouts, as there are 20 in the base game, and have to, having to have a think about the best way to use those shouts. Icefall. If you're enjoying this video, could I ask you to give it a like? That'd be great, thanks perhaps consider subscribing to follow my channel as I add content where I look at technical aspects of some of my favorite games. Whirlwind Sprint. Good. Very good. Unlike Skyrim Special Edition, the OG Skyrim, the original Skyrim, did not have a quick save option. However, thanks to Connect, it does now. Quick save. Quick save. Quick save. Saying quick save always without fail for me generated a quick save. Um, although quick is a relative term, of course, as we're using the Xbox 360 here and their storage system is quite slow compared to the newer consoles. You can also quick load your quick save or make a save to a new save. There's also the ability to access the items, the magic, or the skills menu using your voice, but to be honest, it's so quick to do that with a controller that I'd hardly bother. As you know, in Skyrim, you can make a favorites list and include anything in your items or spells menus. Skyrim's voice command allows you to access items from your favorites list quickly. It includes a voice shortcut for each type of item or spell. You first link a voice shortcut to the item in your favorites list. Once linked, you can access or activate that item or spell during the game with the voice shortcut. So for example, you can link the voice shortcut health potion to any strength of a health potion you choose. You could say equip health potion and you'll drink the health potion. Assign stamina potion. 
a sign magicka potion equip health potion equip health potion you could link your favorite mace to the mace shortcut and set up a favorite bow and link a voice shortcut to your preferred shield so once set up you can then say equip mace and shield for example and it will do just that but it won't draw them unless you're already in a combat stance equip bow equip mace and shield you can also set up dual wielding by designating which weapons go into the left and right hands Assign dual wield left. Assign dual wield right. Equip dual weapons. That's cool. There are 11 spell voice shortcuts. Saying the name of the spell will just ready that spell for use. It won't cast the spell. There's also the option to dual wield spells. So you can just say equip dual fire spell and whatever fire spell you've designated is equipped in both hands. Assign frost spell. Equip dual frost spell. Nice. There is a voice shortcut just called light, which you can link to a torch or perhaps to the candlelight or mage light spells. Equip light. And there's a soul trap command as well, which I often just link to my um, personal soul harvesting tool, my bespoke dagger, which I call soul sponge. But you could also just link it to a spell. Which brings me to my final point. The system doesn't care what each voice shortcut is linked to, so long as it's in your favorites menu. So if you don't use spells much, you could link the shortcut frenzy spell to your backup one-handed weapon or whatever you want. As long as you remember it, that's all that counts. There are a couple of drawbacks to this method of accessing your favorites list though. And the first is that it disables that left and right direction button shortcut that we normally have on the controllers. And I found this an issue and I think it was just muscle memory really because I'm so used to using them. And the second disadvantage is that it was hard to quickly change items or spells during the middle of combat. Many times I would want to change from my bow to a mason shield when the enemy closed in on me just to find the command wasn't received. Now it could be because my character was getting <laughs> smashed to pieces at the time that in the heat of battle my voice changed to some stroppy Aussie accent which was not recognised as English by Connect. But there are many times when I'm sure that I've said the shortcut command correctly during combat and it still didn't work. And I do wonder if it is just down to the old venerable 360 console and that during combat, it's just overloaded and doesn't have the computing resources available to process my command on top of all that. Um, mm -hmm. Can I recommend my most recent video to you? It is the first one I've made, not focusing on a single game. It is about the importance of landmarks in open world games and how they can help with immersion. And I use examples from lots of different games, including a bunch of Bethesda games, Skyrim, Oblivion, Fallout 3, but also from more recent games like Horizon Forbidden West, the Far Cry games, Immortals Phoenix Rising, uh, Elden Ring, and a few others as well. It's a good list of examples of the different ways in which landmarks have really helped shape our immersion in games. One cool feature of voice commands is that I could tell my follower what to do without entering the menu. This was a great aid to immersion. Ally open. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Being able to tell my follower to attack whoever I was looking at was about as easy as it could be. Ally attack. And trading was nice and quick too. And you didn't receive any of those snarky comments from your followers. It's at this point that I'd love to show you footage of me trading with Lydia to show that she doesn't complain about carrying my burden. 
but I couldn't find her anywhere. This was a 10 year old save game. I was a Thane of Whiterun, but she was not in Breeze Home or anywhere in Whiterun. Um, and I waited around for two days just to see if she'd turn up. And it was at about this time that I realized, boy, I had a really good set of ebony armor on. Yeah, so um, you may know where this is going. What this probably means is that I <clears throat> sacrificed Lydia to Boethia during Boethia's um, Daedric quest. Um, as I said, this is an old save, so I don't actually specifically remember doing it, but that's where all the evidence points. So I'm sorry to any Lydia fans out there, but damn, it's good armor that I've got. I really quite like it. Okay, so this is perhaps my favorite feature of the voice command system, and it is one of those that is not available on any other vanilla version of Skyrim. When you open a container, you can say loot items and you loot the items in the container. Pretty straightforward, but that's not the cool part. The cool part is that you can use your voice to set a loot limit. Items below this limit will not be looted when using the loot items command. So the loot limit is set by setting the value to weight ratio. So I can open a container and say set loot limit 25. From then on, whenever I loot items from a container with the loot items command, it will only take items with a value to weight ratio of 25 to 1 or more. Anything less than that is left in the container. Just open the chest as normal with your controller. Set loot limit 100. Loot items. Set loot limit 25. Loot items. This feature stops you accidentally filling up your inventory with worthless junk. The loot items command will always loot gold. It's a really clever feature actually. I found myself using it quite a lot. Inventory management. This might sound a bit boring, but this includes another feature not in any other version of Skyrim. You can use your voice to navigate your inventory, uh, shop owner's inventory, or the contents of a container. The awesome part of the command is that you can then use voice commands to sort the items by name, by weight, or by value, which you just can't do in any other version of Skyrim, and it drives me crazy. Your weapons. Sort by weight sort by value my weapons sort by value so saying sort by is uh, it's a true quality of life feature I've got to say for Skyrim there are a bunch of mods which allow this and I'm putting good money down that they were probably some of the first mods ever made for the game I use this feature all the time the map this is the final set of features, the map interface. So you can in theory at least say quick map and the map will appear when you're in normal gameplay. But this was the one command that rarely worked for me. Quick map. Quick map. Quick map. It worked. So it's working now because I've gotten into the habit of saying quick map instead of quick map i i know if i'm rushing i don't pronounce the k in quick but uh, it is so easy to get your map up anyway it wasn't really an issue the cool feature is that once the map is at, up you can just say the name of a city and it will quickly jump to the city solitude white run rifton windhelm Morthal, Narkath, Twist. So I don't have a, it's given me a cross, which means it understood, but it doesn't have a quest, a single quest it can take me to. So if I outline a single quest, quest, boom. Where am I? Damn straight. So what are some of the limitations of this voice command system? Well, 
I discovered that it doesn't work very well if you're talking to a camera or to yourself. You can't have anyone else in the room talking as it may misinterpret their words as a command. For example, my wife accidentally phosphorized Ayala off a cliff when she came in here as I was testing the system out. It was bloody funny, but sorry, I don't have any footage of that. Uh, having a TV on or probably even music in the background would be an issue. In fact, I use closed back headphones when playing because the game noise over the speaker did seem to generate false commands. It is a shame the Kinect doesn't have an interface for microphone. Being able to use a mic with filtering enabled would probably solve many of these issues. Finally, my accent didn't seem to be an issue, <laughs> except perhaps in the heat of battle. Best features for me made it easy for me to use a wider variety of shouts and more often. Equip light to use the torch was really useful. The quick save, quick load feature I used all the time. Naming a city on the map with voice commands sped map navigation up. In the inventory, sorting by name, weight or value was just awesome. Set, and that setting loot limit function was really helpful. Best of all, it allowed me to do some things I just couldn't do in normal Skyrim on consoles. I'm currently also doing a run through of vanilla Skyrim on my PlayStation 5, and I found myself missing some of these voice command features. And I think that says something about how useful they can be. So you may be wondering why make a video about an out of date system? The short answer is I found this system really interesting. There was more built into this voice control system than I first thought, and I am actually quite impressed with its accuracy, considering its age. In general, the videos I make, I do so as a pastime, for fun, so I take my time with them and I pick topics I think are interesting. I also like the idea that this information is all together in a single place and can be used by anyone for years to come. Finally, it's just a great way to connect with others, people like you who share my interests. Thanks for watching. If you have any experience with the Skyrim voice control system, I'd be keen to hear about it. All good. Cheers. Ram Nexus out.